Good evening, everyone. Uh, we will be starting the webinar at 7.30 uh, as scheduled, but for those keen enough to jump on early, uh, please enjoy this quick two minute video on Overstim presented by Dr. George Cox, one of our speakers for this evening. In today's market, do you have the opportunity to sell more lambs or increase the size of your flock? Overstim is a tool used to increase lambing rates by increasing your percentage of twins and triplets born. Proper planning is required to ensure that you have the resources required to feed and manage the multiple bearing ewes and additional lambs. Overstim works by stopping the egg limiting messages sent to the ewes brain. It does this by blocking the production of the hormone androstenedione, dione which results in the ovaries producing more eggs, meaning there are more lambs born and with proper management higher marking rates. This graph combines research results and shows that by using Overstim in your ewes, you can increase the ovulation rate of your ewes by between 18 and 45%. Assuming that you have a thousand ewes and lambs are worth about $250 and assuming your current marking percentage is 90%, then just a 20% increase in the number of lambs marked can lead to an additional income of $45,000. It is recommended that you scan your ewes in order to effectively allocate feed. If using Overstim for the first time, an initial vaccination should be given six to nine weeks prior to joining. A second booster dose should then be given three to four weeks prior to joining. In following years, a single booster vaccination can be given three to four weeks prior to joining. It is recommended that teaser rams be used two weeks out from joining to initiate and synchronize estrus activity. Ask your local Furback area sales manager about using Overstim to increase your lamb numbers today. All right, good evening everyone and welcome to this very special webinar we have titled Boosting Lambing Rates. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I hope those of you who were here early enjoyed that video. It is on our um, Verbac web page and the Overstim page there as well if you, wanted, if you do want to check that out or you only caught the, uh, the second half or, or missed it completely. Uh, my name is Alex and I'm the product manager for the sheep range at Verbac and I'll be your moderator uh, for this evening's events. Um, tonight we have a full panel of speakers including Dr. Graham Lane, uh, Dr. George Cox as well as Steve Morgan on board as well. Before we get into it, a bit of housekeeping uh, to get started with. You should be able to hear us but we cannot hear you. If you are having technical issues, uh, please call or text the number on your screen and I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, if you do have any questions for Graham, George or Steve, please type them into the question box provided and we'll do our best to address them at the end of the session. Uh, please be as clear as possible when asking questions so that we can give you the best possible answers. By attending today, we are giving you access to a digital version of the Overstim booklet. To access this booklet, go to the handouts tab on your GoTo webinar panel and double click to download. Uh, we have also included our very popular quarantine tech note produced by Dr. Tim Elliott as well, which can be found in the same location. Uh, we are also giving away a prize pack today, um, or tonight rather, uh, you know, over $300. At the end of the webinar, there will be a survey, survey that will pop up on your screen. Simply answer the questions in this survey to go into the draw to win. 
uh, you'll be notified via email within 24 hours if you have been successful. All right, so um, getting back into it, as I said, we have, uh, we're lucky enough to have three presenters on, on tonight. So uh, firstly, we have uh, Dr. Graham Lane. Uh, Graham Lane has 36 years experience consulting to farmers and agribusinesses in New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia and South Australia and has presented at conferences internationally as well as across Australia. Graham also spent five years in a lecturer position at the University of Melbourne in the Veterinary Faculties McKinnon Project and has authored a number of scientific papers. He has veterinary and finance qualifications and is an authorised representative to provide futures advice in agricultural commodities. Dr George Cox is an experienced livestock veterinarian, having spent time in mixed rural practice in clinical product development and evaluation, training, marketing management and technical services. George is a member of the Sheep, Camel and Goat and Vet and Australian Cattle Vet interest groups of the AVA and has a keen interest in livestock health and production. Uh, tonight we also have the pleasure of having Steve Morgan joining us tonight from Kangaroo Island. Uh, Steve, Lucy and their four kids run a 760 hectare mixed sheep and cropping enterprise and have been using Overstim on their property for the last three years and have been kind enough to share their experience with you all tonight. Um, now, before I pass over to George to get us started, uh, we, will, we will be asking a few poll questions uh, throughout the evening. Uh, these questions will help us get a better understanding of who you are and what information will be most beneficial to you. Uh, these poll questions are anonymous, uh, so please be honest with your response. And I will actually pop up the first question now. So, first question. Uh, when is your joining date? Give me a few more seconds. We'll close that in three, two, one. So you should be able to see it on your screen now. So the majority uh, join in November, December and January and February. Um, second question. Nice easy one. Have you used Overstim before? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's right. No. The answers are correct. Thought I had two no's there. Get that a few more seconds as well. And we'll close that one in three, two, one. So 12% have used Overstim before, 50% haven't but have heard of it, um, and 38% uh, I know and have not heard of it. Great, thanks for that, guys. We'll have, as I said, we'll have more poll questions throughout the evening. And um, I will now pass to George to uh, get things underway. We can see your screen, George. Just got to unmute yourself. There we Thanks, go. Alex. Um, that gives us no a, some idea of who we're talking to. And uh, just get the slides moving. Okay, we often miss opportunities uh, either because we think about them for too long or because it just seems too difficult to do. Uh, now, we can either focus on the challenges or we can turn them into opportunities. So, even though the uh, national flock is at its lowest uh, level in decades, we're actually producing more and heavier lambs and the demand will only grow over the next couple of years. The conditions out there have improved greatly, but even though we've had good rain, 
and the outlook is positive, it is difficult to find quality replacement stock and they are really expensive. Um, so the opportunity lies in producing more uh, from the stock we have. Now, we, if we have to produce more lambs, uh, we've basically got three options. Uh, firstly, we can uh, get more use in lamb, or we can buy more use in, or we can uh, produce more lambs with the use we already have, provided we have the genetics and the feed. If you decide to buy and use, uh, do not compromise on your biosecurity measures. You do not want to bring somebody else's problems onto your property. Uh, spend the money on products like Tridectin and Zolvix uh, as a quarantine drench, and it will save you a lot of pain in future. Be also mindful of the quality of the animals you buy in, because you don't want to take three steps back uh, in, in your breeding. Now, to help us understand your current performance uh, better, please just answer the following question about your uh, operation. Thanks, George. I just realized I didn't share the previous poll question. Uh the responses there either, so I'll just share that to show you I wasn't I wasn't lying. So there it is there. And we'll go to the next question. Are you a prime lamb or wool producer? Close up in three, two, one. So the majority are prime lamb um, with 41% uh, being both and 11% wool producers. So the next one is just for the prime lamb producers or those who are both as well. So what is your current lambing percentage? We'll close that one in three, two, one. So 39% uh, between 110 and 130%, uh, 18% between 130 and 150, and 14% above 150%, and no one below 90% there. Uh, the next one is the same question, but for the wool producers. We'll shut that one down. Three, two, one. So a few less wool producers on tonight. So 71% um, between 90 and 110, 21% between 110 and 130, and 7% above 130% there. Thank you all very much, George. Back to you. Well, we obviously have very progressive producers. Uh, so there's really, really, really good results. Now, what influences the lambing or marking rates of, of our flocks? Uh, most of us uh, s uh, select for f fertility, and that's the genetic ability of both the ewe and the ram to reproduce. Uh, we really take good care of any health issues that may affect reproduction, like campy or brucellosis. Uh, we feed them well, but we don't always consider embryo survival and uh, we seldomly think about the ovulation rates, even though ovulation rate is the most important factor in determining the number of lambs produced per ewe. If the ovaries don't produce two or more eggs, there's no opportunity uh, for the ewe to produce twins. Now, ovulation rates, unfortunately, is, is, is really difficult to, to, to measure, uh, but we can, and we all do record our marking rates or percentages. So how do we improve our marking percentage? Uh, well, it all starts with nutrition at the top, uh, then followed by nutrition and more nutrition. Genetics also plays an important role, 
uh, as does the ovulation rate, as I said, and don't forget the RAM. But we'll go deeper into each of them. So the first four areas, most of us understand and manage really well, uh, but we often forget about the RAMs and we never think of uh, the ovulation rates. So if we look at the first objective of good nutrition, uh, it's, it's all about the condition of the ewe. We have to maintain the ewes in the right condition score. And we know that a condition score between three and four uh, will ensure that we have lambing rate, rates in excess of 120%. Uh, but, and, and that is all achieved by reducing the number of tries uh, and increasing the number of twins. We only get one shot at optimizing the conception rate. We, we can't add more lambs at a later, later stage. We can only do things uh, to limit the wastage after uh, conception. We also know that using good condition produce uh, heavier lambs. And that is important because heavier lambs are more likely to survive uh, up until weaning and uh, uh, eventual sale. So, but sometimes we don't have enough time or we don't have enough feed to get the ewes in the right condition. And in those conditions, we can consider flushing or feeding lupins prior to joining. Uh, recommendations vary on the quantity fed, uh, the starting time and duration, uh, but the response can be really dramatic. Uh, we can have an increase of up to 30% in ovulation rates. But you don't need to flush uh, if at least 85% of the ewes in each mob are above the target condition score of three at the start of joining. Wastage from scanning to marking can be as high as 25%. And there are multiple possible causes for this. It could be normal developmental problems, uh, infectious disease, environmental conditions or toxins. It could be deficiencies in trace minerals uh, influencing the antioxidant and immune systems. So this brings us to the third area of nutrition. And that involves ensuring that both the REM and the U have sufficient levels of trace minerals to ensure sperm uh, quality and quantity to assist with ovulation and protection of the fast dividing embryos. Uh, special attention needs to be given to those trace minerals that is involved in the antioxidant system. Traditionally, we were only concerned about avoiding deficiencies, but today we know that a strategic top up of trace minerals, when they are needed, uh, improves both the fertility and the immunity uh, of the animal. So, assuming we have proper nutrition, the use starts off on, on the left-hand side with sufficient levels of those trace minerals at joining. Then the ewe uses some to support the pregnancy. And just before lambing, she channels as much trace minerals as possible to the unborn lamb. The lamb is born with about three to four times the level of trace minerals present in the ewe. Partly because of this, the ewe's immune system is compromised. This leads to the periparturin rise in worm egg counts. And that is why giving an effective and persistent range like Sidectin long acting or Tridectin uh, pre lambing is so important to protect the ewe and her lambs. We give a six in one booster vaccination pre lambing, uh, and we expect enough antibodies in the colostrum to pre prevent the lamb, uh, to protect the lamb for the first six weeks. Uh, this is why giving Multiman pre joining and pre lambing. Uh, is, is so important and gives us consistent returns. The latest results from a trial in Victoria again confirmed these results in that uh, we, we, we completed a trial last year that involved five properties and more than 1,400 ewes. And we only treated the ewes pre-joining and pre-lambing. And on average, we achieved 7.3% higher marking rates compared to the untreated group and the lambs weighed on average two kilograms more at weaning, and the weaning was at 12 weeks. So proving that this proves that we can reduce some of the loss from scanning to marking and improve the health of the lambs by topping up with trace minerals at the right times. Now, Alex has another poll question for us, and after that, Dr. Graham will share ideas on multiple bearing new management and the return on investment you can expect when using Overstem to improve your marking percentage. Thanks, George. I've got two questions here. Uh, can we go up on your screen now? So the first one is, do you scan for multiples? Good 
we'll close that one in three, two, one. And 67% do, 31% do not, and 3% aren't, not so sure. And next question, how do you manage multiple bearing years? We'll shut that one down in three. Still some responses coming through. Two, one. So 64% uh, manage them as a separate mob. 31% uh, do, uh, don't manage them any differently to the single bearing use. And 6% only separate the use um, uh, with twins after lambing. Great. No, thank you, George. I will now pass it over to Graham. Alex, um, the I hope you're welcome to all, all attendees. Hope you're nice and uh, warm and dry. It's been a, some nasty weather down south over the last uh, few days, but uh, anyway. That's all a bit of moisture will get the season, keep the season going nicely. So I'll just share this. Um, it's been lovely, mm -hmm. Graham. Sorry? It's been lovely in Sydney. It's been lovely in Sydney. <laughs> you wait, it's coming. <laughs> I, think, I think you're about to, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you should all be able to see that screen. I'm going to talk today about the Overstim economics, and um, the Overstim uh, is a, is a, essentially a vaccine and that's been around for a while initially marketed as fecundant. So what I'll do is just introduce um, the topics that I'm going to talk about tonight and just change the slide. Yep. So firstly I'm just going to run through some of the lifetime year management principles. Lifetime year management has been around for a while based on the lifetime bull research that was undertaken in uh, West Victoria and uh, southwest of WA. It's certainly been a popular course to do and the principles have been put in place on a number of farmers with very profitable results and certainly um, the fact that it's practical and uh, the outcomes are predictable has been a great driver its adoption and uh, I, I recommend a course to, to do a course if you have not done, undertaken already. I'm going to cover some of the economics of overstim treatment for use by First of all, giving you a bit of background to the modelling I undertake, some of the key assumptions in uh, that I've put into the model, the results of that modelling exercise and the conclusions to take home. And to cut to the chase tonight, I guess um, the key results is that treating ewes with overstim and cost of about $3 a year results in $7 per DSC profit or $18 ewe extra profit. It's an attractive way to increase lambing percentages by 20%. There's a number of ways that you can increase lambing percentage and there's no nothing to stop you from using them all, but certainly uh, this gives you a very good return for relatively low input and uh, relatively low labour, easy step to put in place to get more lambs. Firstly, uh, just run through some lifetime new principles. The key is, you measure things to manage ewes and some of those key measurements to you condition score and managing that to hit their condition score targets to improve the outcomes in the ewe and their progeny. Uh, assessing pasture feed on offer um, and managing ewes so to, in a way to hit their targets, uh, their condition score target is fundamental to getting good outcomes from lifetime ewe management principles. What you will achieve is better lamb survival and growth rates, uh, about 15% better lambing percentage, improved lifetime wool production in merinos, and wool producing meat sheep, 
um, if you, even if you've got a prime limited prize with reasonable wool production, you'll see the benefits over time. And uh, you also will uh, improve profit by about $20 per year for half condition score improvement in condition. condition. I'm just going to fiddle with the controls for a bit. I, I, I'm not on my webcam isn't working. It is now. There we go. I think you can see me now. Okay, so let's move to the next step of um, uh, a, gu a guideline to the optimum condition scores for the maternal use. This is um, based on this is on very recent uh, research published by uh, Andrew Thompson and John Young and their crew at Murdoch Uni and uh, funded by MLA. So we've seen, um, you know, aiming at mid pregnancy at 3.3 condition score and uh, for singles lambing 3.0 condition score and um, better than that at uh, point of lambing for multiples. So that's a bit of a guide to the condition score targets I've been talking about for maternals. Merinos a bit less. So what are some of the outcomes of the lifetime new management principles? Improving the condition score of twin bearing ewes. So preferentially allocating feed uh, to them rather than single use. And as you can see from that graph, there's certainly a fair bit of risk with um, single use. We'll just go back to the main thing. Single, single bearing ewes are at risk of um, having significant losses once their condition score rises above three and a half condition score. So just remember that 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 is a bit of a risk there. And um, just keep in mind to start preferentially feeding them. Likewise, twin lambing ewes, there's a real benefit in allocating them so that, that allocating the feed to them so they get more um, conditions on them and moving that condition score from 2.7 to 3.3 .3 for twin bearing ewes will mean 20 lambs more per 100 ewes. So that's naturally very attractive financially in today's environment. There is a sweet spot for finishing off the lambs too. So what you want to aim at is having ewes grazing at two and a half tonne of dry matter during mid lactation. Two more is barrier up to that point, uh, both twins and singles. Well, the red line is the singles and the green line is the twins. And just bear in mind that moving from one and a half tonne of dry matter at mid lactation to 2.5 will give you another two kilos of uh, weight per lamb. So again, that's quite significant. But on the other hand, you do not want to overdo it as once you go over three tonnes, you start to see the lambs also drop off in uh, weight at weaning time. And naturally that weaning weight will translate into sale weight and financial returns. The key part of overstim usage and uh, also of, uh, of um, lifetime new principles is to achieve more twins and to get them through with better survival. So if you've got twins, your good shoulder is important. So the trial work uh, undertaken in the Evergrove's trial showed that there was only percent more twins surviving in where there was good shoulder compared to a normal paddock situation. That doesn't mean that you have to race out and plant a uh, uh, million dollars worth of trees or something like that, but you can't might think about what paddocks would be best suited well ahead in early in the season to allocate both uh, the twins to good shelter and to good food levels because improving pasture food levels from 1100 to 2000 kilos will increase lamb twin survival by 8%. There's also further gains that can be made by splitting mobs and by splitting a mob in half you can improve twin survival by about 2%. So just to summarise, I guess, for twin survival, shelter is more important than pasture food, which is more important than splitting mobs. So prioritise shelter first, pasture food second, and then splitting mobs. Uh, all of those activities have very good returns uh, and profit from undertaking them, but the priority really is shelter. That's just high, this graph highlights the pasture food level effect on lamb survival. And as you can see for lamb survival, as the birth weight goes up, 
survival improves, whereas the pasture food level at lambing is probably uh, not as critical as improving that birth weight bit with better condition score of the ewes. So just to give a bit of background on the modelling exercise, I used a sophisticated bioeconomic model called grass growth. It was developed by the CSRO uh, and it's been extensively validated under Australian conditions. So it's very good at simulating and replicating what actually happens uh, in out there in the paddock. Um, in terms of overstim, it was developed over 40 years ago to increase ovulation rate and increase lambs born. At the time of its release, it was uh, relatively, in real dollar terms, more expensive and also lambs were less valuable than they are now. And so the, the profit was marginal. Certainly there, there was a case to use it in some cases, in some uh, scenarios, but um, it, its use fell off a bit. But with higher meat prices, significantly higher meat prices, is it time for a rethink? And uh, the numbers certainly suggest yes. So let's go into a bit more detail. For this modelling exercise, we assumed a first cross U enterprise running at Hamilton. Uh, you could run it anywhere in Grass Road, but uh, just to make things simple in terms of um, indicative of higher rainfall environments, I guess, for a prime lamb enterprise, we use Hamilton. Uh, their productivity is based on the average of the Agriculture Victoria's lifetime, Livestock Farm Monitor Project average return on prime lamb enterprise. So that's um, very straightforward and easy to, it's published uh, nationally and it's easy to see what uh, that average flock will do. So the, the simulated flock is optimally stocked and on optimally fertilised pastures to improve with a stocking rate of eight ewes per hectare, including the, which includes their follow-on lambs and the ram flock. Rams, uh, sorry, they lamb in mid-July with a 1st of July stocking rate of 15 DC per hectare. They turn off trade lambs and they're all sold by January. If need be, there's some feeding of those lambs, but uh, uh, that, so there's 20, oh, sorry, overstim results in 20% more lambs born and marked, which means so that because of that high conception rate that Overstim develops, to have the same stocking rate in July, we need to adjust the stocking rate down to run 7.8 ewes per hectare to have the same energy requirement, energy in the band of the flock in the middle of winter. That will become more apparent with this um, graph. So we've got the control flock at eight ewes per hectare, and here in, uh, First of July, they're at 15 days C per hectare. And as a lamb peak and peak lactation occurs, the demand really steep increases up to a peak of 34 DC per hectare as the lambs are weaned. So, you know, a huge increase in um, feed demand, and that's met by uh, spring pasture growth. On the other hand, the, the treated ewes run at 7.8 ewes per hectare, also have an 1st July stocking rate of, of 15 DC per hectare. However, the ramp up in demand because of the extra lambs that are born leads to a stocking rate of nearly 36 DC per hectare. So let's just look at that again, 34 DC per hectare in the peak in spring and 36 DC per hectare. So there's quite a big increase in demand by treating the ewes with overstim. In this mo sorry, Graham. Model office, sorry, Graham. I don't want to interrupt you. Um, I just have a question come through. I haven't been doing my job properly and checking the questions. I just have a quick question <laughs> here. What is pasture food? Uh, pasture. It's uh, that question okay, again. On, on. Pasture food. Pasture food is a measure of the available. Oh, sorry, of the total herbage available. So it's, food is short for feed on offer, and that's one way of measuring pasture. It's essentially uh, getting a scalpel and taking off all the green material or everything above the soil level, okay? There's another way of measuring pasture food, uh, sorry, amount of pasture for what the, the stock will eat in, um, and that's called herbage availability. And that is done with some um, shearing clippers or uh, something like that. And there's a residual amount of pasture left uh, that's above the soil. 
and traditionally that's been taken as what the sheep can't, or cattle or sheep particularly can't eat. Okay, pasture food is a preferred measure nowadays because it's it's taking it back to the, exactly the same level. There's no doubt that you've got it all. Unlike with uh, clippers, if you've got a few stones underneath or or something like that, you won't you may not get all the pasture that's in that part available in that pasture. Hope that clarifies that one. Great, thank you, Greg. It does. Any thank others, you. Alan? No, we're all good, are we? All good. Yeah, no, cool. Okay, excellent. So in this uh, modelling exercise, I've, I've, um, which I uh, undertook a bit a couple of months ago, I, uh, I assumed 900 cents per uh, kilo for land and 700 cents for mutton based on the trajectory of um, the land market and sheep market at the time. And that's just for the next 12 months. But um, I think, the, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that as an average over the year anyway. Um, and the reason, key reason for that is the global economy does seem to be recovering, particularly the developing Asian economies, which is critical to land demand and sheep demand. So we'll see, but um, there's certainly uh, risks out there in terms of um, uh, what I call COVID-19 disruption. So, you know, whether it be um, uh, meatworks having issues with COVID-19 infections or governments regulating their uh, capacity or issues with shipping um, getting into ports overseas to our markets. There's all sorts of things that might arise. So we'll just work on that for the moment. Um, I, I, I remain optimistic that we'll get to that because the, the, the demand for lamb and sheep meats is increasing remarkably. Uh, and the supply, and that's the other key aspect of me plumping for those figures, is that the supply is probably going to be focused more about, you know, the, the supply might be poorer than we think because I think there'll be some people who will be joining uh, the U portion, um, a greater portion of the U um, drop. But anyway, let's move on. So that's slightly higher than two year average, uh, but the impact of African spine fever, that's the other factor that I think is a big factor. Uh, is yet to be fully felt on global markets. At the moment, it's likely that the meat supply gap due to the impact of African swine fever on the Chinese pig flock herd is as much as all the traded red meat in the world, sorry, meat protein in the world, from source from pigs, poultry, uh, lamb, beef, and sheep meats. So it's a massive deficit. and. Anecdotally, some people in China believe it could be greater than that. So that's going to put a lot of pressure on meat prices. It was already starting to happen pre-COVID-19, but um, COVID-19 probably has um, tempered a bit, but I believe that we will see in, uh, that impact fully. Asian growth post-COVID-19, certainly China's recovered well from COVID-19 and a friend that works in China, he said the new normal in China is normal. So the, it, it's it's as if nothing has occurred. They're back to business and working. And obviously that to continue that, that's got to be supported by uh, recovery in the global economy in general. And that the, there are leading indicators pointing to that. Restock of pressure has not gone away. Uh, sheep numbers are low north of the Murray and they will be for some time. So that, that will tend to contribute to high prices too. So what I found with uh, running grass grow through on the Overstem treated farm, it produces 48 kilos per hectare more meat, but 53 kilos per hectare of that is more lamb. The lamb sold because there were more twins was point, you know, only 200, they're only 200 grams lighter on average um, than the untreated flock, um, there was an annual stocking rate of, um, in the control, uh, average annual stocking rate of 19.9 DC per hectare in the untreated flock and 20.5 DC per hectare in the treated flock. And that bigger average annual is because there were more lambs in the spring. So the gross margin was increased by 10%, $7 a DC, which is a remarkable achievement and that's quite a lot of money and that equates to $18 per year extra profit or $18,000 per thousand years. So testing this for sensitivity makes very little difference to the outcome. At 700 cents for lamb, which some pundits are 
saying it could be as low as for the average this year. I tend to disagree. And 600 cents for mutton. Uh, the advantage for the average in treated years was still significant at $6 per day, so or $14 per year extra profit. So whichever way you cut it, it's going to be profitable. You'd have to get to extremely low land values for this not to be very profitable. So if we look at as an example, and look, there's not a lot of difference between these. This is the weather land uh, growth rates uh, from the um, untreated ewe flock. And the, the median growth rate is hunting around that 300 grams per head per day through the peak of the spring. And the overstim treated are about a, sim, about a similar. If we look at the growth path of the lambs of the untreated flock, the median lambs have a steady rise up to 50 kilos. And then, uh, you know, they plateau out at about um, 55 kilos as they're sold off in January. And the Oversteam treated flock are slightly less, let's say 200 grams, you can just see it. Um, there's not much there, difference there. So that's just to put in the picture really that the, the lambs from the Oversteam, you know, the fact is if you've got twins and you've got good pasture conditions and um, you can, and you'll see good growth rates in them still, they won't be that far behind the singletons really by the time they're sold. So in short, just the, in terms of the modeling exercise, if, uh, we assumed over sim results in 20% more lands, which is typical of the trial results. Uh, there's an increase in costs due to over sim of $3 per head per year. And to maintain that midwinter stocking rate, we had to reduce that number of ewes run in the over sim treated flock slightly to 7.8 versus 8 ewes per hectare. But the over sim treated farm produces 50 more, 53 kilos per hectare more of lamb, which results in a seven dollars per DC profit or eighteen dollars a year profit. So just wrapping up uh, my part of tonight's presentation, lifetime new management is worth really worthwhile adopting and to do the course and to understand it. It's practical and very profitable. Um, I've explained the background to the modeling in terms of um, using the bioeconomic model of grass grow, the assumptions uh, what was uh, came out from that modelling exercise and the conclusions. And the take home message is simple. Um, you can spend $3 per year to have 20% more lambs and that's worth an extra $7 a DC profit or $18 per year extra profit. So I might wind it up there and thank you for listening tonight. Thank you, Graham, and I'm um, sure you have much more to say in the questions component of tonight's presentation as well. I will pass back Thank to George you. now. Thank you, Alex. Sorry, George, you are muted there. I think it was my fault. Thanks, Graham and Alex. It's always um, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> if we recap, then uh, proper nutrition is, is, is really required uh, for getting, getting the use in the right body condition. Uh, we can use nutrition to flush to improve the uh, ovulation rate as well. Uh, we need nutrition to uh, ensure that those embryos survive uh, and, and until uh, we can actually sell them eventually. And we've just heard that we need to manage those multiple bearing ewes uh, very, very carefully. And for some reason, nothing is happening. Alex, what have you done? <laughs> Let's change this pointer again. 
Oh, it works. I, I, yeah, I think if you got the pointer on, George, you have to use your keyboard to change slides. That's it. I tried, tried the keyboard, but they didn't work either. Uh, so selection, the, the next point is then selection for fertility, which is really important. And, and we should uh, focus on both the, the RAM and the U. If we look at the RAMs, we should select RAMs that produce U's that wean more lambs. Uh, and if we look, to, look at the U's, uh, we should select the U's for the number of lambs born uh, at uh, three years of age. If we just do those two things, uh, we will make appreciable genetic uh, progress. Now, Coming to the ovulation rate, uh, you may ask that if fertility is inherited and nutrition is optimal, uh, is there actually any benefit in improving the ovulation rate further? And as Graham has explained, that is really where the opportunity is uh, right now. So we can increase that lambing rate by, uh, as, as Graham said, by, by, by 20%, but uh, it, it could be much, much, much bigger on your specific property. Now we all know that hormones controls all of us, uh, and you may know that if if, if you look at the, the animal, the, the brain tells the ovary uh, to, pro to to produce a, a follicle, and the developing follicle then tells the brain to stop uh, sending that message down to the ovary, uh, and that messenger is called androstenedione. dione, uh, and ovastim provides is, is a vaccine uh, that provides antibodies that blocks that messenger. So what then happens is the ovary keeps on producing eggs, and this leads to a higher ovulation rate uh, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the EU. So the result of the ovistim use is increased egg production and an increased ovulation rate. Uh, but we need to manage those uh, embryos and lambs really well to make sure that we actually get to the higher marking rates uh, in, in the end. So combining the published results, we see that it really doesn't matter whether you're joining in spring or in autumn. Uh, if the ewes are cycling, Overstem will deliver more, more lambs, and that's that 23% average uh, increase. The next graph actually illustrates the importance of the condition of the animal. The heavier the animal, uh, the, the better the results. So that underscores the importance of, of, of nutrition. And if you're joining in spring or summer, you can manage the seasonality in some of the British breeds uh, by using melatonin and ovistum together to produce significantly more lambs. Uh, remember, melatonin will trick them into thinking that it's autumn and get them cycling, and ovistum will increase the ovulation rate. Now, how much work is involved? Well, it's a vaccine. Uh, so the first year, we unfortunately have to give two doses. Uh, the initial vaccination is six to nine weeks prior to joining, and the second dose is not closer than three weeks prior to joining. The ideal time is four weeks prior to joining, and that's the same time we're already giving Multiman. And uh, if ewes are bred out of season, uh, it is a really good idea to use teasers uh, just to get them cycling and to synchronize them as well. Uh, you then join for the standard 35 days, and after about 13 to 14 weeks, Overstim no longer has any uh, further effect on the ovulation rate in the animal. The second year, all the animals that you treated the first year, you only have to vaccinate once. It's like a booster vaccine uh, to maintain the effect uh, in those use. As long as you give it within 14 months of the previous dose, uh, you will get the same results. So it increases your ovulation rate, gets more lamb, on the lambs on the ground and increases the profitability of the operation. And as I said, there's one thing, one, one, one aspect that we tend to, to often forget and uh, we didn't tonight, and that's the rams. Uh, and we, we, we know that we have to do the breeding soundness examination at least three months prior to joining. Uh, and that is because spermatogenesis takes about two months. And if you top up now with Multiman, uh, then you improve the semen quality and quantity. And it also gives you time to find replacements if any of those rams fail the exam. So you have to do a full clinical evaluation involving the uh, teeth, the torso, the testicles, the tozzle, and the feet, uh, all the attributes required for a successful joining. And unfortunately, rams tend to be uh, more susceptible to parasites as well. And if you buy rams in, they can really be a source of a resistant worm population on your property. So a good quarantine procedure is essential. 
Uh, again, we recommend using tridectin that contains moxidectin. That still works on 43% uh, more farms compared to albumectin and contains three broad spectrum actives. And add a new molecule like monopantyl or Zolvix to make sure that no worm survives uh, in that ram. Uh, you can do a worm account on the use as well, just to and range if, if, if required. But it is a re really stressful time for the, the ram. They don't do much apart from a, a little bit of eating uh, during joining. Uh, so it's really important to ensure that their vaccination status is up to date uh, and to boost their immunity by topping up uh, with multimin. Now, Richard Branson said that if somebody offers you an amazing opportunity, but you're not sure that you can do it, say yes. Uh, and then learn to do it later. Uh, but with Overstim, uh, you don't have to. Assistance is available. Just ask your local Verbeck area sales manager to tell you more about the target sheet program uh, to help us do the right things at the right times uh, to ensure uh, optimal performance. Now, advisors agree that Overstim is grossly underused currently. Uh, we regularly now get feedback of customers improving scanning rates by 15 to 45%. Uh, so if you do everything right, you have to really be prepared for a lot more lambs. But enough from advisors, though. Um, producer Steve Morgan has, has kindly agreed to share his experience with us. Uh, thanks, Steve. I'll, I'll run through, through the slides with you. Yep. No worries, George. Good evening to everyone. Evening, Steve. You can go, Steve. Okay, thanks, George. Um, yes, so myself and Lucy and our four kids, uh, we farm here on Kangaroo Island. Uh, we've got 760 hectares mixed over uh, two properties with a mixture of sheep and cropping. And we're currently using Overstem in, uh, oh, it's a mob with about 900 now, but it'll be up to 1200 next year of um, borderless to merino uh, first cross use. Thanks, George. Next slide. You there, George? Uh, yes, I have moved on to the next that's slide. Excellent. Yep, I've got it now. Um, yes, yeah, so that's we've been using Overstem uh, since 2018, so the past three years. Uh, including this year and yeah our results in the first two years were quite variable um, uh, almost to the point where I wasn't going to continue but I, I kept going and this year's results have been excellent and you can see there these are our scanning percentages for the last three years um, so we do scan for obviously scan for dries singles and multiples but we don't scan for triplets or anything beyond uh, just a multiple at this stage. So um, you can see 124% in 2018, which is probably what you'd expect um, almost without Overstem. And then 2019 was obviously a very bad year for some reason, and, and this year has been uh, remarkably higher. So, yeah. And just to look at, we can go to the next slide if you want, George. Um, some of the reasons we thought about why 2019 could have been different. Um, I may have got the timing of the vaccine injections uh, could have been a little bit wrong. Uh, with the, the so I think it's important to get those particularly right with your three to four weeks and your six to nine weeks, um, especially in your the ewes that are getting the overstem for the first time, um, yeah, it's pretty important to get that right. We also could have stressed those maiden ewes out quite a lot. We shifted them from one property to the other between the initial and the second uh, injection. That wasn't ideal. It wasn't what we wanted to do. Uh, it was just the way the chips fell that year. Um, and we certainly won't be doing that again. And possibly our RAM ratio may not have been high enough. We were using one ram to every 90 ewes. And in 2020, we um, stocked up on our rams, bought younger rams, um, the same breed. We crossed them with white suffix, uh, but we've got the ram ratio down to one ram every 60 now. And I'm sure that that has an effect as well. So 
um, yeah, we'll be continuing to make sure our, our RAM ratio is is uh, nice and low going forward. And next one, George. So these are our scanning results from this year. Um, yeah, so we scanned 971 news. Uh, 294 were singles, 619 were multiples, um, includes triplets and quads. I have no idea how many triplets and quads we got. However, I, I saw at least two quads just um, in, you know, driving around and the ewe was going fine. She was tending to all four lambs, um, which is a credit to her, obviously, at the time. So that was good. Um, and we had 58 dry ewes which is about 6% and we sold them immediately. So, which I'll be doing every year from now on, um, they crossbred use if they can't produce a lamb, they don't stay on our property. So, and that scanning result, including all those drives, obviously was 158%. And just to give you an update, we just finished marking all those lambs uh, today. Over the last three days, we've been lamb marking in there and uh, all things tallied up. I think, that's the uh, the marking rate, I suppose you'd call it, was about 146%. So we lost uh, 12%, which, yeah, 12 lambs out of every 100 ewes, I suppose you'd say. But, um, so some changes going forward for us. Like this is the first year, obviously, that we've had so many lambs in in this that, that area. So we're continuing to refence the paddocks into smaller paddocks um, and putting in laneways to ensure that we just don't stress those ewes out any more than we have to to get them in and out and to work with them. Um, we're looking at getting an auto drafter to help with the spring, uh, obviously to get those lambs off when they're up to weight. We just need to do that as best we can with as low stress as possible there as well. And we'll be setting the ewes up for the following year um, as soon as we can. So we'll wean those lambs this year, get the ewes back in condition. I mean, they're looking pretty good at this stage, but I think part of the rate, part of the reason, you know, it's all been talked about tonight, but you've really got to look after the ewes for 12 months of the year to ensure that you get your higher lambing percentages. Um, keeping the ram team young and fit and looking after them as well, which has been talked about just previously, but um, it can often be overlooked. I think you just put the rams out and assume they'll do the job, um, but I think it's important to look after them as well. And obviously look at the injection timings, get them right. And we will consider using EID tags on our use going forward. It's not compulsory here in SA yet, um, but there's it's probably not a massive advantage at this stage, but to be able to know which rams are continually producing twins, I think would be, um, would be a good thing as well if you're going to sell anything off later on. So, yeah, as well as, I can't talk highly enough of the Lifetime Year Management course, did that a few years ago as well. So I would encourage anyone who hasn't done that to look at that as well. Um, so the benefits to us at this stage, it's it's, it's obviously allowed us to produce more lambs, um, which is more kilograms of lamb per hectare and increases the dollars per hectare. But the other thing is, you, as we've sort of been saying, like I can run less use now during our period of low feed or hand feeding, which for us is, it can be from December and January through to May or June, depending on the rain. So, you know, if we can increase our lambing or marking scanning percentages by 20, 30, 40%, it just means we don't have to hand feed as many ewes over the summer either. So there's that additional benefit to us where we live. Thanks for that, uh, uh, Steve. That's it. It's really yeah. appreciated. No worries. And I'm here. Uh, I'm here till the end. So if anyone's got any questions, feel free. Thanks, Alex. Great. No, thanks, Steve. Thanks, George. Thanks, George, and thanks, Graham. Um, yes, really good information there. Um, I'll just flick it back to me now. There we go. 
Um, yeah, guys, just a reminder, if you do have any questions, um, please ask them now. Now, while you are putting those together, uh, we do want to offer you the opportunity to find out more about Overstim uh, by setting, setting up a meeting with a Verbac representative. Um, all you have to do is register your interest in the survey that will pop up at the conclusion of this webinar. Um, alternatively, if you need to leave early, you can email the address on your screen here. That's my email address. Uh, just include your contact details, your location, and your preferred uh, meeting time as well. Um, if you would like to reach out to a Verbeck representative directly, you can find the link on the slide uh, down here as well, uh, or just Google Verbeck Rep Finder uh, to find your closest Verbeck Area Sales Manager. Uh, another piece of material we have developed recently to help you evaluate the return on investment Overstim can give you is the Overstim calculator, now on the Verbeck website. Um, in order to use this calculator, all you need is the price of Overstim from your local reseller, the number, number of views on your farm, and the current price of lambs. Um, this link will also be sent to you all in a follow-up email uh, following this webinar in, in the next 24 hours as well. All right. Moving on to questions now, we've had quite a few come in. This is open to anyone on our, on our panel as well. Okay, I think this first question was answered early on, but we'll just go over it again uh, really quickly. Um, does this product um, being overstim replace the need for, sorry, of feeding lupins? Graham, do you want to answer that one? Uh, I, I thought you yeah, you, you, I thought you covered that in the talk actually, but um, yeah, that that's certainly um, I, I wouldn't think so. No, that's you can do both. Yes, definitely. Great, thank you. All right, um, next you want to still question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Um, and this might, we, I might have just answered this question with the, the calculator on the Verbeck site, but um, we'll see what we, what we come up with. Um, if we reduce the prices by, say, $2 per kilo for lamb and mutton, what are the effects on profit from the vaccine? Also, so being overstim, uh, WA prices seem to be a couple of bucks lower than in the east. Mm. Well, I, I think Graham hey. uh, demonstrated that uh, very well. Yeah, the scenario testing I did was to get off flow, and uh, uh, and certainly the profit still was substantial. So uh, the profit might be reduced by um, you know roughly a dollar per DC per um, dollar less of uh, received per lamb. So the, given the profit is quite substantial at 900 or 700 cents. Per, per kilogram dress weight of lamb, it's not going to make a big difference. You, you know, you virtually have to receive, um, you know, for, uh, uh, you know, down to two dollars or so before you, it becomes more marginal. Great, thank you. Um, next question: If uh, your markings are 135 percent on merinos, will overstim lead to 20 percent? I guess a 20% increase, i.e. is the relationship linear? That's a, that, that's a very good question. And uh, uh, there's been limited work done on merinos with that high a, a lambing uh, percentage. Uh, but we assume, yes, it, it will it will taper off. There is a, a limit, uh, but you will still most probably get a, 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 a positive effect off with Oyster. Just to add to that, George, yes, I agree um, with what you're saying there, but I, I think that uh, merinos are not uh, definitely um, taking off at that level based on some of the things. But um, obviously, one has to be a bit more cautious um, about using merinos, particularly uh, the ability to uh, manage the twins that would be produced by Overstim use. Do you want to expand a bit on that um, ECG Marinos, um, George? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to get on with you. No, 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 I'm, I'm happy if you want to. Oh, I was just going to say that um, the, 
on the label there's a um, recommendation not to use the merinos and that goes back to um, probably the, the, the days when merinos weren't uh, that, uh, you know, the reproductive rates weren't that high going back, you know, this product was developed in the 70s. So um, we've just got to remember that a lot of trials were done on genotypes that are quite different than today's genotypes. So some of the merinos around now are going to be a different kettle of fish potentially for using this product. Um, I think that, that there's, there's no biological reason why you can't use it in merinos. It's really about the twins being produced, uh, being, um, uh, coming through and surviving. Okay, so uh, that's that's where that's generated. That's where that uh, provides us generated from. Would that be fair to say, George? Very much so. Yes, thanks, Graham. Great, thanks, guys. Um, next question. Uh, this is for Steve Morgan. Uh, does Steve know what his approximate lambing percentage was prior to 2018? Was it ever higher than 2020 at 158%? Not Steve, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, Just it's... coming off now. Uh, yeah, that was probably a little bit remiss of me not to put in percentages before that. Um, so we run uh, merinos as well, and we've always looked at sort of 80% merinos. 100 uh, in in our border Leicester Merino crosses. And then with our second crosses, yeah, between 100 to 120%, it certainly wasn't anywhere near what we've seen um, this year. And, uh, definitely playing catch up um, with our sort of farming practices to cope with the extra lambs, which is a good problem. But no, we would have been happy with anything, you know, around that 120, 130 tops percent for second cross lambs. I, I might add just in there that okay. um, you get, with any biological product, you're going to expect a variation. The 20%, sorry, the 23% average that we talk about, and I assume 20% in my modelling, um, is basically a, a, an average over a lot of trials. You, you'll find quite a bit of variation um, from year to year and from mob to mob, but that average figure is probably a pretty fair estimate of where you end up. Great, no thanks, Steve. Thanks. Graham, um, we do have a lot of questions here and we are already over time. Uh, if I don't get to your question, we will address it in the next couple of days. So, so don't worry, if we don't address the question, um, we will get back to you, I promise. Um, okay, next one. Um, do I need to continue overstimming for the life of the year? And also is the life of the year reduced with regular multiple lambs? With overstim, uh, def definitely not. It's, it's, it depends on whether there's an economic benefit for you. So you have to use it every year if you want to have the benefit of overstim. Um, hmm. yeah, across the lifetime, I don't know, Graham, have you said, seen any influence on lifetime production? No, no. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, there, there's no lifetime um, issues with. Um, uh, getting extra lambs out of you. The only issue would be if you're in um, potentially in a hypocalcemic um, situation and you don't want to be. That's something you want to prevent anyway, whether you're going to use overstim or not. But that potentially might lead to, uh, because of just twin bearing ewes, a bit more susceptible to hypocalcemia, particularly older twin bearing ewes. But I mean, if you're addressing that hypocalcemia, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have a, a, an issue with uh, less uh, um, longevity due to having a few extra lambs. That's what they're there for. <laughs> That's what they're bred for. <laughs> I guess the only other risk there is if you do skip a year, you are back to square one. You've got to start with your, your two dose program again. So that does increase the cost if you do miss a year as well. So, okay. okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah it's just that into that. Question. Just a quick one. Yep. The cost is small compared to the gross income and the profit you will generate from its use. So if you do skip a year for some reason, and it's economically sound to do it mm. in the following, well, sure, two vaccinations are going to be beneficial uh, to profit. So it's as simple as that. Yeah. No, thanks, Graham. Good point. I think this is a question for Steve. Uh, how many of the, the dry were you wieners? 
Uh, I'm not too sure on that. I would have to check back through for my figures. Uh, what I think I said I had about 60 drives in there. I, I would think probably maybe 20, 20, 20 to 30 would have been. Um, question. But um, yeah, my Merinos, I give a second chance, but uh, the crossbreds, I'm sorry, don't get a second chance. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, so I'm just trying to pick out the questions that would be most beneficial for the whole audience at this stage. Um, we'll probably kick on for the 10 or so minutes, if that's okay with the, the panel. Sure. Uh, so next question, how long before joining do you recommend shearing the rams? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that one, if you like. Uh, Definitely, uh, preferably uh, within, sorry, before three months of joining, and no way should they be shorn uh, within two months of joining. You know, that's, and really seriously, it should be three months, at least three months. Yeah, because the shearing will have detrimental impacts on sperm, potential sperm uh, production, but certainly sperm quality. So you don't want that, obviously, before joining. And I've seen a number of times issues with fertility associated with shearing rams just before joining. It's an absolute no-no. Okay, thanks. Um, next question, I missed the reference to melatonin. Uh, what is it and how does it work? It's from Brian. Okay, mel melatonin is, 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 is mm, yep. uh, a, a substance that is produced uh, in the animal when the day light gets shorter uh, and that induces cycling in, in, in the use. That's, that's why you, you, you normally uh, cycle in, in autumn uh, or after, after January mm -hmm. when the days get shorter. Uh, so you, you can artificially give them melatonin and that is done by an implant that you do just at the base of the year. Um, you have to do that, uh, I think it's about five weeks before joining Graham. Yeah. Um, but but, but it, remember, it just, it, it just ensures that more use uh, cycle. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's of good use when you, when you join in, in spring or summer. No, well, no, no use no, in no. autumn. For those early join, um, join, early join use, it'll, it'll bring on about 10% uh, extra lambs. That's a ballpark. Yeah. Any further comments on that, George? Can Can yeah, I just no. comment to that? So, what What you're saying there is, if If I've only got 60 dry use out of a thousand, that melatonin could make those 60 cycle. That's all I'm going to gain from that. Is that correct? Uh, it It could. It depends on what the cause was for those empties. Uh, yeah. they, they might still have been cycling, but they might have lost the embryos for, for other reasons. That's right. Yeah, but if you've already got a high conception rate, it, it's not going to have any effect on that, is it? Is that right? So, so it's only for your really seasonal breeds, so your, your British breeds, uh, that, that, that you want to counter the seasonality. Uh, yeah, merinos don't really have that issue, and merino crosses neither. Great. Essentially, it, it, essentially okay, thanks, it's a good discussion. That's yeah, seasonal breeding part. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Uh, my allowing percentage is 150%. Will I still get full benefit from overstem? <laughs> Sorry, Alex, was that 150%? 150%. Well, you better make sure that you can manage that, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's 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 correct. I think really, um, you know, clearly that's a that, that you've already got a pretty good landing, well, excellent landing percentage, um, and that's right on target. The challenge is to move it up, and I was thinking, um, uh probably can do that. Um, well, it will do that, but the key part is. Um, managing those extra lambs to survive because 
once you've got a conception rate um, above 1.7, okay, or, or roughly 170% scanning, you're basically turning twins into triplets. And so you've got to be able to, if you're at that level, you need to be able to put in place management steps to manage triplets. Um, I have some I have some clients who uh, do have a lot of success with triplets, and obviously Avastin is looking attractive for them, and they're looking at that. But um, seriously, but um, you know, some some that have got the conception rates up and uh, haven't had success with triplets, and I think some survey work on triplet management wasn't terrific reading, uh, to say the least. But um, the, there is opportunity there, and so. It's it's a matter of putting those steps in to manage them. Fortunately, there's some triplet work under, being undertaken by MLA and Murdoch Uni at the moment, and we'll have some really good answers coming out on that. There have been there's sort of some results coming out, out of that now, and um, I think there might be some solid uh, recommendations coming out of that to help producers uh, get make make the whole youth, maternal youth flock a lot more efficient and profitable. Great, thank you, Graham. Um, I think three more questions. Two should be pretty quick, and then we can wrap up. Um, keeping a young ram team, how long do you keep your rams for? This might be for Steve. Uh, look, look, I'll keep them while well, they're fit. I'll keep them, but generally by sort of year six, seven, um, they're on their yeah. way out. Uh, yeah, it's and I try to replenish, you know, obviously a certain number every year, um, if that makes sense, so that you've got um, a graded sort of fitness with them. But I, I think Rams is, I, I've done a few sums myself on on Rams, and I just think they're worth the money uh, if you if you know what you're looking for, and you, it's worth paying the money for them. You'll get that back either in lambs on the ground or in the growth rate in the lambs um, as well. And with meat prices the way they are. Um, yeah, I, I really think it's worth having good rams. I think it, that's a sound investment and having a lot of them. And I'm Great. just, to, Thanks, just to clarify, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a ram breeder. I'm, I'm no interest in the ram industry from that point of view. No comment. <laughs> good disclaimer. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, next question. Graham might want yep. to add something around young rams sure. and experience. Yeah, certainly. Uh, there's a couple of things there. One is um, uh, just uh, yeah, younger rams aren't actually um, experienced, so you, you'll have to join them at a higher rate than um, a fit. Mature ram can be used at one percent, so yeah, the, the evidence is very strong both sides of the creek in terms of New Zealand research and Australian research uh, that one percent will do the job, but I, I emphasise and, and jump up and down saying so they've got to be fit and vet checked to make sure they're fine. But younger rams that don't are sexually uh, inexperienced, they need to be joined probably um, at around about 1 to 75, so, um, you know, or 1.5%. So you do need to um, make sure you've got enough ram power and have them vet checked each year to make sure that they're free of any um, lumps and bumps that are hard to fill in. To, uh, the testicles or in, in the epididymis and the uh, scrotal cord and the testicular cord. So I'm making sure that they're absolutely fit, taut, and terrific. Great, thanks, Graham. Uh, can I drench with trachin and inject with overstim and multimin all on the same day? That's one for George. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's definitely no no problem with it at all. Uh, yeah, as long as it fits, fits in with your normal management to a procedure, that's you, you can do all three of them at the same time. Agreed. Right, thanks. <laughs> thanks, George. And just keeping with Multimin for a second, should the Multimin be given to both ewes and rams three months before joining? Uh, you can give it to the ewes, but you will have a better benefit if you give it to the ewes a month prior to, to, to joining. Uh, the rams you have to give three months prior. That's uh, to help with this permit to Genesis. Great. 
Great. Thank you. And last question for tonight. As I said, we will respond to all your questions um, in the next couple of days as well. Um, so last one, uh, what are the available product sizes? So as you can see on your screen, it only comes in a 100 mil pack size. That includes 50 doses within that. Uh, how much is it? Uh, you have to contact your local reseller. Uh, we don't set the prices, but our recommended retail price is $131. Uh, but please contact your local reseller to get clarification on that. And do I need a vet sign off? No, you do not. Anything to add to those points, guys? Uh, only, only, but being a, being the, uh, knowing how competitive uh, uh, retailing is in the um, <laughs> rural scene, uh, you'll find that product will be cheaper than that out, out on the shelf. Yep. Yep. I, I actually assume, I assume with my modeling um, a, a standard retail price for that and labour it for as well. So um, it, it sh I didn't point that out, but that will, you know, you can assume that it'd be a lot less cost than what I budgeted on. Mm. Yeah, no, please reach out to your, to your local reseller um, there as well. Now, we do have, just have a question on, on supply as well. Um, if you're in Victoria and South Australia, you've been pretty well serviced with Overstim at the moment. Um, so we, have, we do have a lot more product coming out in early September as well. Um, so if you are finding it hard to, to get a hold of it, if you are looking to, to use it, early September, you'll, you'll see a lot more product out there. So, yeah, please contact our customer service team or your local sales rep to, um, to see where that's at as well. All right, well, um, we'll stop the, the questions there. Um, but before I do, we do finish up. Um, here's a quick snapshot of things to consider uh, when looking to use Overstim. Uh, Overstim has been shown to increase lending rates by 23% uh, on average. But as we really covered, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, as George said, nutrition, nutrition, nutrition is, is critical to success here. So, um, and just quickly, for more information on nutrition, you can check out our, our pre-joining webinar that um, Graham and George presented about a month back. Uh, this recording is on our website and will also be sent to you in a follow-up email as well. Um, and a final important point to make is uh, to make sure that if you are a first-time user, that you buy enough product um, for both your initial and your, your booster dose as well. Um, so I hope now you all have a much better understanding of how uh, Overstim works uh, in managing your RAM and use uh, pre-joining. Now, before we do finish up this evening, uh, Verbeck are giving away it's a Pari HD4 sheep handler. Uh, this is brought to you by Triathlon. To go into the draw to win, simply follow the link on your screen and let us know either how you have used Triathlon on your property or if you haven't used it before, how you uh, would use it on your property. So this is for anyone, uh, any sheep producer out there to, to enter. Uh, and finally, um, uh, finally, all year Verbeck have been running a target sheep series of webinars. Uh, webinar number seven will be held on the 23rd of September and be focused on weaning. Um, to see a full list of webinars, you can follow the link now on your screen um, or simply Google the back webinars. Um, so thanks everyone for presenting today. Here's a, here's a picture that was presented to me by a listener during the webinar as well. So thank you very much for, for <laughs> sending through your photos. I might make that a thing moving forward. Um, thank you, Grave. Thank you, George and, and Steve for your time this evening. Um, a survey will pop up following this webinar. Uh, if you have the time, please take a couple of minutes to complete the survey. Uh, we very much appreciate it. Uh, and you must fill this out to be eligible for the $300 prize uh, that we, we launched at the beginning of the webinar, um, as well as to request a Verbeck representative um, to follow up and talk to you more about Iverson and any of the other Verbeck products as well. Uh, please keep an eye out for the follow-up email in the next 24 hours. It will be important information from this webinar, including details on the trading competition, our fully stopped coming webinars, links to past webinars, and a lot more. Um, and yeah, thanks all for, for joining us tonight and, and sticking around. Uh, we hope you really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, please do enjoy the rest of your week. And, and thank you once again to, to Graham, George, and Steve for, for their time as well. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just say thank you just to Verbeck for um, hosting, Alex for um, com comparing and George's excellent uh, presentation, Steve's excellent um, outline of his experiences. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. Great. Thanks, guys. We'll end it there. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks. Good night, all.